Hello friends, hope you are doing well. Lead extraction consists of three basic steps, concentration of the ore, and then roasting and sintering of the ore, and then followed by the reduction in the blast furnace. This is the most economical way of extracting lead. So let's start one by one. Friends, we usually find all these sulphides, lead sulphide, zinc sulphide, copper sulphide, iron sulphide, these are all found together in the nature. So to separate the required sulphide from the ore, we have a special process called differential flotation. This helps in precipitating one at a time. Differential flotation means modifying the surface properties of these ore particles and making one ore to precipitate at a time. So after this, we get a concentrate, lead concentrate. This consists of mostly lead and another is zinc concentrate. This is zinc rich concentrate and this is lead rich concentrate. So this goes for the zinc extraction process and lead rich concentrate is our main raw material for blast furnace extraction of lead. Friends, the lead rich concentrate that we got from differential flotation is in the form of fine powder which is not good for blast furnace. Why? Because if it is a fine powder, it causes a huge problem by forming channeling in blast furnace. So we cannot use fine powder as a raw material for our blast furnace. And one more thing, when we convert our sulphides to oxides, why? Through roasting, why do we convert? Because oxides are more reducible than sulphides. Friends, I want you to list out the points why oxides are more reducible than sulphides in our metallurgy crisp telegram group. Friends, both roasting and sintering is, do is done in Dwight Lloyd sintering machine, both process at once. Friends, these are the reactions during roasting. Our lead sulphide galena reacts with oxygen at high temperature, producing lead oxide and sulphur dioxide. Friends, why we are doing both process in this Dwight Lloyd sintering machine is, this provides better recovery of sulphur dioxide. And we know sulphur dioxide can be used in produ production of H2SO4. And another reaction, friends, silica. From where the silica is coming? It is coming from the our flotation because whenever we do basic leaching same with alumina leaching as well there also SO2 comes along with alumina so whenever we do basic leaching silica is almost always comes with the concentrate so here silica reacts with friends here you see silica is locking our ore with itself so SO2 plus 2 PVO gives rise to 2 PVO SiO2 now let's move on to the third step friends friends now let's look at blast furnace lead extraction friends our blast furnace is exactly similar to the iron making blast furnace but the size is very small it is just 8 meters height and it can produce 200 to 600 tons per day. Friends, the operating temperature is always kept around less than 1200 degrees centigrade. The boss temperature, the temperature just about 2 years, it is kept around less than 1200 degrees centigrade. Why? Because our lead has very low melting point. It is just 327 degrees centigrade. So there is a chance of losing lead as fumes. So we have to reduce this. We always lose. That is why we keep electrostatic precipitators at the top of the blast furnace to recover the lead which we lost in the fumes. To reduce that, we always try to keep the temperature at this lower level. If at all temperature goes to the higher level, we even cool it with water supply as well. Let's look at raw materials, friends. Raw material one is center, which we got from wet lab center machine. Number two is flux. We use limestone and quartz as our flux. And coke is our main reducing agent. And we use scrap iron. Friends, I'm going to discuss a little about why do we need or why do we add scrap iron and aid. is our agent in burning coal. We blow oxygen or air to friends nearly we have 20 tiers 20 or even more tiers through which we supply air it reacts with our coke and producing carbon monoxide which releases heat which helps in heating the burden material the air is going like this and burden material is coming like this earlier also we discussed why do we need a centered material because if it is a fine particles the air which goes at a high pressure can find a channel can find a way to go out so we need to increase the contact time between our reducing gases and the burden material if it is a finer particle then the contact time reduces because air just escapes like that. We don't want that. So just like our iron making furnace, here we're going to get our liquid lead along with a lot of other things. Let's discuss that. Friends, after completion of the reduction, here we get four layers. In iron making glass furnace, we get only two layers, which is pig iron and slag. But here we get four different layers depending on the composition of our lead concentrate that we used earlier. First layer is slag and the last layer is lead because lead is having highest density out of all these things. If our concentrate is having some amount of copper sulphide, then we get a layer called mate layer. And another species, this mainly consists of impurities like FES4 and other impurities. So these two are sent to copper converter. And out of all these four layers, lead settles at the bottom layer. So the name came for lead as base bullion because it is at the base of all the products. Friends, now let's discuss what is the point of adding scrap iron in lead blast furnace. Friends, first point is, if we have any unreduced EBS during our roasting process, iron helps in reducing and to convert into lead and iron sulphide formation. 
It also helps in recovery of lead. Friends, we understood this compound forms during the roasting because of presence of silica. But iron recovers lead and forms 2FeSiO3. And here it is doing another important function also, friends, which is decreasing the activity of the slag by forming 2FeSiO2. So it is keeping the lead losses low so that we won't lose more lead in the form of slag. And it is also reducing the activity of the slag so that there is no back reaction. Friends, iron combines with any presence of silica in our charged material and it forms the same compound 2FuSiO2 and it also reduces the melting point of the slag, so which makes the slag more viscous, sorry, less viscous, which means fluidity of the slag is more. And last step, it also helps in reducing lead from lead oxide as well. So addition of scrap iron has all these functions. So it is very important to add scrap iron in our lead blast furnace. It makes the process more easier and it recovers a lot of lead from the slag so that the productivity of the process is very good. Friends, the base bullion we got in our blast furnace consists of a lot of metals, a lot of precious metals, copper and up 4 to 5 percent consists of all these metals. So first we remove all these precious metals, silver, copper, desilverization, we have a lot of processes, we remove all these metals and then we go through electrolytic, electrolytic refining to produce our purest form or the desired form of lead. Friends, usually out of the whole production of silver in the world, 70% of silver is produced by just by recovery from, you know, silver comes as a byproduct of a lot of metal industries. Only 30% silver is extracted from directly from the ore and remaining 70% just like the recovery from here we are recovering. These are the main contributes to the overall production of silver in the world. I hope you understood the complete concept, friends. Don't forget to answer this question, why oxides are more reducible than sulfides in our telegram group, Metallurgy Crisp. So stay safe. Keep smiling.